a faster spread means no room in hospitals to get care. But flattening the curve means communities do more to stop the spread. We must flatten this curve and we must social distance. With they're, they're, proper intervention, the curve is flattened. We can flatten the curve, so which is flattening the curve. You flatten the curve to the flatten more. the curve. This is Phil Dockman, and welcome to SeaWorld News. Over the last year, many of us have been focused on flattening the curve of coronavirus, but as life returns to normalcy, many cornea specialists throughout the world are shifting their attention back to a different curve, flattening the curve of keratoconus. Recently, a new surgery called corneal allogenic intrastromal ring segments, or CARES, implantation has been developed to do just that. Tonight, we have the inventor of the surgery, Susan Jacob, with us to discuss this innovation. Hi, Susan. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. We are all inspired by your many innovations throughout your career. But tonight, I'd like to focus on CARES, which is a procedure you developed in 2015 and introduced in your first publication on it in 2018. What was your thought process behind it? And what led you to think of the idea? Now, uh, why did I get this idea? Uh, well, it's uh, basically because, uh, you know, the synthetic uh, intrastromal ring segments, though they give a great effect in keratoconic patients in terms of regularizing the topography and in improving the uh, quality of vision, they are known to be associated with complications and even up to 30% rate of complications has been associated or described for them. And, uh, you know, uh, cross-linking by itself, though it's a great surgery in stopping progression or decreasing progression does not really uh, add greatly to improving the topography of the patient. So my idea was, uh, you know, when ICR, synthetic ICRs are giving you a great effect, but they're not uh, very great in terms of safety, why could we not harness the effect, but uh, kind of also increase the safety at the same time by using allogenic segments? What are some of the unique benefits of this landmark operation? As we started doing the surgeries, uh, we realized that this really has great advantages in terms of not only uh, getting rid of the complications, but also in terms of being able to treat a much wider pool of patients. We could uh, go ahead and treat uh, much more steeper corneas because of the safety factor that comes in, even thinner corneas, uh, because you do not necessarily have to have 450 microns in the zone of implantation. So I've treated really thin corneas as well, uh, and, and uh, you can implant it more superficially, thereby getting a better effect. And just to summarize, how would you describe the success of the surgery within the ophthalmic community? Well, I'm happy to say that one of the markers of the success of a surgery is basically its acceptance by your peers. And I'm happy to say that there has been wide acceptance of this procedure among uh, ophthalmologists as well as patients. Absolutely. Thanks, Susan. Speaking of wide acceptance of the surgery, we also have with us Jack Parker, who is one of the first adopters of this surgery. Welcome, Jack. Thanks for joining us tonight. So good to be here with you, Philip. Thank you. So it's my understanding that you perform CARES implantation with a few modifications to the technique. Can you elaborate on that? Well, they say that necessity is the mother of invention. And in our case, that was true. Uh, you know, Susan's original paper, brilliant as it was, described using the femtosecond laser to dissect the pockets for the CARES segments. But we don't have access to the femtosecond laser in the States, or at least not in Birmingham, Alabama, where I practice. We have a manual technique that we use for intacts, and we thought just to repurpose this technique for CARES implantation. So uh, once we did that, we started using this manual method for implanting the segments or dissecting the channel for implanting the segments. There were two other modifications we made to Susan's original protocol. The first is that she stains her segments with a riboflavin solution, which is yellow and which facilitates concomitant corneal cross-linking. Well, here we can't do cross-linking at the same time in the OR, so there's no reason to use riboflavin, but as a substitute to stain the segments, we use tripan blue, which is great because it enhances their vis visibility and facilitates their insertion. And the other thing that we do is we thin the segments by dehydrating them. So rather than soaking them in tripan blue and inserting them wet, we soak them in tripan blue and then let them dry out and that stiffens the segments and thins them. And that enables us to slip them into the channels much more easily. 
And also it lets us use thicker segments and they can fit in once we thin them through dehydration and the thicker segments effectuate a greater flattening. So that's been kind of a nice ancillary benefit of, of doing the thinning. Wow, that's fascinating. And I've heard you've had some spectacular results on level of flattening. Because we're able to use thicker segments and, um, uh, and operate even on eyes with very advanced keratoconus, we notice that we can experience uh, much more corneal flattening than you get even with uh, intact segments. So with intacts, you more or less expect maybe four or five, six, seven diopters of flattening. With KR segments, it's not uncommon to see 20 or even 30 diopters of flattening in some cases. Truly incredible results, Jack. Now let's see CARES using a manual technique using stained and dehydrated segments. After drying the ocular surface, the segment is placed atop the recipient cornea and pushed into the intrastromal channel through the temporal incision using a bent Y rod. Take note of the vivid contrast between the stained segment with the recipient cornea and how that differs from the surgery done with unstained segments. Furthermore, the dehydration of segments allows for easier implantation of thicker segments which, as Jack stated, induces a greater degree of flattening than thinner segments. Notice how dehydration of the segments improves visibility as well. After the segment has been advanced through 50% of the channel by pushing, a reverse Sinsky hook is introduced via the nasal incision and used to pull the segment to its final location. This process is repeated on the opposite side if a second segment needs to be inserted. In our experience, wound gape is encountered more frequently in CARES implantation because the extreme flattening effect the segments induce. So if needed, we'll then use a 10 nylon suture to close both incisions and complete the operation. So how do these eyes fare? Here are two shine fluke images. The one in red shows a cornea prior to CARES, and the one in green shows the same cornea after. If you overlay these images, you can see the dramatic flattening that the surgery induces. But not only that, there is a regularization of the corneal shape. And let's look at the changes in axial curvature. Preoperatively, you see this as a case of very advanced keratoconus, with a K-max in the upper 80s. However, by post-op day one, there were more than 24 diopters of flattening, demonstrating the astounding effectiveness of CARES implantation. Thank you for joining us tonight for the breaking updates on this incredibly promising procedure we call CARES. And from all of us here at SeaWorld News, I'm Phil Dockery, and you stay classy, Las Vegas.